All right, Delilah fans, here we are with the episode review for Season 1, Episode 4, entitled Andre. Now, this ep this series is getting, it, it's getting good. I mean, well, I always thought the first two episodes started out okay. Episode 3 was pretty decent. Episode 4, it's like we're slowly beginning to unravel the layers of this alleged cover-up. And there's a lot of intrigue going on. I think my favorite element about the show so far is the obvious main storyline, which is the question about whether or not Delilah and Tamara's friendship can survive the fact that they are going, well, eventually going up against each other in court. And it really shows that Tamara is a woman of principle, not just a woman of position. It's like being partner really what doesn't matter to her if she gets there in a sketchy way. So I think I'm pretty confident about giving this episode a solid 7 out of 10. And before we jump into the actual review, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button to show you like the video. Also hit the bell notification icon and select all that way you don't miss out whenever I post new content to the channel. Follow me on social media, links are in the description box below, and hit subscribe because remember I'm trying to increase the subscriber percentage watch time on the channel. We're currently at around 31% of watch time coming from subscribers, so if you are a frequent viewer, please hit subscribe in order to help that number increase. I'm trying to reach at least 40% by the end of the month. So, basically the episode itself is really focusing on the fact that in about a week, Nate is supposed to be discharged from the hospital to actually go back home. Um, however, first they need to work through a few things, you know, actually schedule a meeting, going back to the house to determine what changes need to be made in order to make the house more efficient to accommodate for the fact that he's in a wheelchair. Um, you know, Delilah actually comes in because I do believe Nate's kind of chatting it up with one of the janitor, the custodians there. So Delilah confronts him about the Dion situation and the fact that, you know, their dad came over. He was scared to death, figuring like, did he do something wrong? Do I have to go to Papa's house when I stay, want to stay with you? And basically, she also switches gears to the accident about whether or not Nate can remember anything. And, you know, was it labeled as equipment malfunction or, you know, what exactly does the paperwork say about your situation? So, you know, he hands over the paperwork to Delilah because, you know, obviously opening it up will be like reopening old wounds because he says, you know, I'm just now able to go to sleep at night without having, you know, horrible nightmares. So, there were some inconsistencies in the reports from a Sergeant Rick Patengale. Look, I know I couldn't, I can't say it right, Patengale. But basically, Sergeant Patengale is the one who made the two reports. However, one says other, the other one says equipment malfunction. So from there, Delilah tells his information to Harper and Demetria. And apparently they did they did some research after Delilah brought it up. There have been at least six other soldiers who have the same backstory where they have conflicting reports from the same sergeant. So the question is, why are there inconsistencies? Is it a matter of covering something up? What's the bigger story here? And Tamara, I mean, yeah, Delilah's confident that in the preview she said the same thing. That Tamara, once she hears the situation in regards to Nate, she's confident her friend is going to do the right thing. Honestly, I was just like Harper and Demetra in that scene, kind of like silent judgment of, eh, I don't think so. But Tamara actually proved me wrong as we got more into the episode. So Jamal actually calls Delilah uh, because he has tickets to a game. But, you know, it's like, look, I know you said call back in like a month, but this kind of dropped in my lap. And she's like, ooh, I can't, but here's what we can do. Um, If I can find a babysitter Friday night, we can go to dinner. And it was a pretty cute scene. It's like they kind of have a mini back and forth about, hey, I know you said you pay, but I'm old fashioned. I, I want to pay for the dinner. So they work things out. So they'll hook up in a couple of days. Tamara actually gets a phone call from Casey because she's about to get off of work and he's about to make a special dinner. And after that, 
Delilah actually heads over to the apartment or loft or condo. Basically, she heads over to Tamar's place. There's a balloons and streamers. I'm like, yo, what's going on here? Casey actually proposed and Tamar is now engaged. And she asked Delilah to be her maid of honor, which I thought was a great scene. You know, um, I'm sad, though, because I feel as the season or series, because I don't know how many seasons this show was going to get as the series progresses, I'd really hate for their friendship to deteriorate, deteriorate, and yeah, I can't talk. I don't want their friendship to become tarnished by their court case, and then eventually she'll say, you know what, you're no longer my maid of honor. I could totally see a Joan and Tony Child situation going on, because if I'm not mistaken, Joan was actually in Tony's wedding back in Girlfriends, but essentially she actually came over about the situation about the inconsistent soldier reports, and how the radios are dangerous and they may have indeed been a reason why her brother is in a wheelchair. And Tamara's like, look, I'll look into this. You know what's up. It, it turns out it's funky. I'm staying away from this case. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. But, you know, given the celebration, you know, the lies like, look, girl, just I'll come back tomorrow. And she's like, OK, I'll, I'll look at these files tomorrow. I'm not going to look at them tonight, but I'll look into it. So that was a very happy scene. But again, it's like it's only episode four. There's no way their friendship is going to survive this nonsense. But we move forward with uh, Delilah and Dion. I believe. Um, Yeah, she's <laughs> giving him a bath. And he asked the question about whether or not, you know, his parents are getting a divorce. And as a person who doesn't have children, it just breaks my heart to see scenes like this because it shows that there are. A lot of kids who deal with this, the fact that they think they do something wrong and they see their parents separate, if they see mommy and daddy fighting, if they aren't staying with mommy and daddy due to other circumstances. And it really is important to have a person like a Delilah who not only just talks to the children, but also checks in with them to make sure she's aware of how they feel, as opposed to leaving them to their own devices to avoid like emotional issues as they get older. So any scene between little man and his aunt, I'm a big fan of. So from there, we got Tamar talking to the clients about the radios. Uh, basically, she's doing her homework. I, I think it's very important. And you see these in a lot of uh, lawyer shows and movies that involve court cases. Attorneys, lawyers, they don't like surprises. It's like, look, I know you have all this evidence, but are you sure what you're telling me is true? Because if we go into court, and then the opposing side has facts that can back it up, we're screwed. And that's a very valid point. So from there, Delilah and her dad are at Nate's checkout meeting. Um, you know, remodels need to happen before he can actually move in. Apparently, Francis is the woman. I don't know if Delilah and Nate's father divorced their mother, if their mother passed away. But basically, Francis seems to be the woman that he's with right now. And she actually was the one who not only is supporting the remodeling cost, but suggested it to begin with. So it seems that the cost for all the remodeling is going to be handled. Uh, Christine didn't show up to the meeting. Leah actually calls Delilah before they go into the meeting. Essentially, she got um, called or contacted or a letter or email from her former company that fired her saying, if you don't turn over the laptop and phone uh, by such and such a date, then we're going to charge it as theft. Apparently, you know, those devices, even though they're hers, apparently they have files from the company, so they want it back. I want to be honest here. The more we get into this, I, I agree that, you know, if I were in Leah's position, I think when Tamara was telling her about how, hey, you sign an NDA, you'll get, what was it, $3 million or like three years severance package? I would have taken that. I would have been like, screw it. You ain't going to hear a peep out of me, whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying. But in any case, the lie is like, oh, OK, I think it's the bluff. Um, <sighs> come by the office soon and we'll go through the details together. So what they do is they go into the room. Uh, what is it? Delilah, her brother and dad to discuss the remodeling. And you no, know, Delilah isn't, you know, well, she's not even talking, but she's saying a lot. And Nate can pretty much, you know, feel her breathing down his neck in regards to Christine. So they actually have a bit of a back and forth, but eventually they agree that at 4 p.m. tomorrow, they'll stop by the house to do the inspection. So tomorrow's actually talking with Fred about the cover up situation. He makes the call to a woman named Raquel and they go out to the 
warehouse to go over the devices saying that, hey, unless there's a sequence of codes placed into the device after 30 seconds, then it will explode. If there's no code after 30 seconds, it won't be. I agree with Tamara in this situation because in the following scene, um, I believe that Tamar is talking with Wynn because yeah, Fred is on the phone with Wynn right when Tamar comes into his office and basically she smells something funky about this entire situation. And he's like, okay, well, if you don't want the case, I can give it to Leah or excuse me, Lacey, like you wanted from the beginning. Just want to make sure if you want to make partner or not. And I agree with Tamar. It's like, look, I don't know too much about these devices. I mean, she was able to put together a couple of, you know, details about what these devices do, you know, into in order to avoid signals being uh, scrambled and things like that. But I found it strange how the device that the uh, Raquel showed tomorrow was still in the bag. We only saw like the um, one side of it with the switches. It's almost like, let's say if you took a Blu-ray player and you put it in like a bag or a case. So when you open the case, you only saw the back of the uh, Blu-ray, you know, where you put in the different wires, the HDMI cable and stuff like that. So unless I see the front of that device, I can't confirm it's a Blu-ray player. I think it was a dummy device in regards to it being a generic um, device that has a bunch of fancy switches and lights to make it look like it was exactly what these radios are but ag i i agree with tomorrow i think that unless there was a a certified soldier on her side who could have confirmed that the device that she was shown was the device that they were saying it was i think it's funky i, I don't trust it at all so um harper and demetra have a bit of a chat and demetra just seems kind of intrusive uh she's definitely an extrovert i can relate to harper she's more of an introvert in a way, just based off their demeanor. I mean, yeah, she seems like she could be an extrovert, but Demetria is almost like always had 20 cups of coffee before she talks to somebody. So Tamara actually calls Delilah about the situation and she says, look, Tam uh, Delilah, they showed me everything. I just want to let you know that this case is about Leah being fired. It has nothing to do with the radio. So Delilah hangs up on her. After that, we go over to uh, Maya's violin lessons and Miss Virginia is essentially telling her to start over and over again because after the first couple of notes, she doesn't feel like Maya is truly playing from her soul as opposed to playing with her. Yeah, it's like she's playing with her mind instead of playing with her soul. Basically, you're following all the instructions of how to cook something from the box. But if you want to make soul food, it has to come from the soul. You don't go by measurements. You put in as much seasoning as your soul <laughs> tells you to. So anybody can cook from an instruction booklet or a box, but it takes someone special to play or cook from the soul. I know that's a weird analogy, but that's basically what I got from that scene. So we go over to the house inspection. Christine is there, but she's completely kind of Okay, sure. Let's do that. I, well, you know what? I'm, I'm not sure. And Delilah, she Delilah's doing exactly what she said. She ain't saying a damn thing. She has her back turned to the situation. Her dad standing in the room. Uh, you know, Nate's like, okay, we can do that. Yeah, we could take that door off the frame. And hey, uh, Christine, baby, how how do you feel about what we doing to the stairs? Like, I can't do all this. Why? And then Delilah finally gets up. Why? Well, why can't you do it, Christine? And Nate's like, look, look, Delilah, stay out of this. But basically. She says, it's a lot of money, but I think we both know it has nothing to do with the money. So after that, Delilah and her dad step out to let them talk things over. And Delilah's like, well, yeah, because she doesn't want to. She hasn't brought up Andre. What does Andre have to do with this? Andre is the truth. <laughs> so Delilah knows, up. you know, what? I got to go. So uh, Tamara actually is looking at her phone. I'm thinking if she wants to call Delilah, but no, she actually calls Leah and leaves a voicemail. So I wonder what that was about. And Delilah is getting dressed and um, her son, Marcus, and nephew, uh, Dion, they're sitting on the bed and she's like, should I wear this? Should I wear that? And Dion's like, are you going to marry him? No, it's just the day. Yeah, Ma says she ain't getting married no more. What'd you hear that? Well, you said that after you and dad got divorced? Touche. So after she uh, helps the kids, you know, get them ready, get their dinner ready, get you know, take a bath, she's about to go to her date. But as Delilah is getting dressed, Harper calls about the situation, I believe about Leah's 
computer and phone. Also, the fact that Demetria, I guess it's because Demetria, again, is being a bit intrusive, you know, just kind of being no nosy. And uh, Delilah's like, hey, don't worry, I'll talk to her about it, but don't say I said anything. Okay. Which begs the question of how does Harper expect her not to expect, how does Harper expect Demetria not to know that she was the one that talked to Delilah about her kind of toning it down? I guess you could say, not invading personal space and things like that when there's only the three of them that work in that office. As far as I can tell anyway, but whatever. And we have another cutaway. It's like Dimitri, I guess, is at her house and, you know, she has her dinner ready. She prays and then she just starts breaking down crying. So I guess we'll find out more about her person, pers um, personally as the series goes on. Maybe she's lonely. That could explain why she's a bit, you know, overzealous to get to know people. I don't know. But anyway, we go over to the final scene, Jamal and Delilah. Apparently, their dinner reservation got canceled or they weren't able to book it in time. So they decided to just take a stroll. And I guess that was a good move. Jamal's like, you know, well, we can just skip the awkward sitting at a table across from each other staring. So they just talk about their backstories. Uh, what was it? He and Casey met when they were younger because he used to stay at um, the woman who like ran like a what was it, like a children's center or something? I forgot the details. Essentially, it was Casey's aunt. So Casey was like a three years older than Jamal and he helped teach him English because after school or whatever, or after a Casey got back from football practice, they watched the Fresh Prince and Fresh Prince is how Jamal learned English. So they became friends, I guess you could say in their younger years, teenage years. And when it came to Tamar and Delilah, it was during the middle school years. Tamar uh, wanted to reenact a rated version of their eyes were watching God in order to kiss a guy that she really liked but apparently she couldn't go through with it during the actual play and Delilah found her crying in the faculty bathroom they were friends ever since so before Jamal and Delilah were ironically enough about to kiss a phone call comes through and it's Leah she's like I just got home and I think somebody's been here and she's like look call the police stay on the phone with me because they might still be there and then somebody apparently is attacking Leah in her home so that's the end of the episode. But yeah, I just really like the fact this show definitely seems grounded. We're seeing different layers of these characters and I really like it. So I get it though. I can see why this show isn't appealing to some people due to the fact that it's not Greenleaf. I can completely understand that. But I do feel like this show does a great job of giving us a little bit more meat each episode to the mystery about what this cover up is really about. Who's lying? Who can be trusted? How far will um, this company go in order to cover up their explosive radios? Uh, will Nate and Christine work things out? When will Christine tell Nate the truth? Because apparently he's oblivious to the fact that his wife is cheating with their alleged friend. So who knows? But thanks so much for tuning into the video. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you would like to donate to the channel, feel free to do so on PayPal or Cash App.